Hey, what's going on friends? Jermaine here. And in this video, what we're going to be looking at is how to build a RESTful web API using Dart and MongoDB. So in the previous video, what we did was we looked at the Mongo Dart package and we went through some examples with it performing CRUD operations. So in this video, what we'll do is we'll build a REST API, which will act as the gateway whereby these operations would be triggered. So let's begin. First thing we're going to do is create a server and I'll comment all of this out for now because we don't need it right now. And to create a server in Dart, we need to import the Dart IO library. So at the top of the file, I'll put my import statement Dart IO, which contains classes for creating our server essentially. What I'll do is I'll start by defining a port number that we'll use. So I'll use port 8085, and then I'll create a server. To create servers in Dart, what we need to do is I'll wait, and then we use the HTTP server.bind, which is a static method. Bind takes in two arguments. So one is the host name, and the second is the port number. After our database is open, we'll listen on our server for incoming requests. So our request is of type HTTP request, and then we'll call a request. And then what we can do is we return a response. So let's write hello world, and then we can close the request. Okay, so I'm gonna save this, and let's open the terminal and run this file. Okay, so the server should be running now. And to test that it's running, I'm gonna use the curl tool and I'll access localhost 8085. Gives us hello world. So right now let's have an endpoint to essentially represent our people collection. And the way we do that, I'll start by using an if conditional. So let's check the URI path of the request. If the path matches forward slash then we can do this else if the request path matches people then we'll handle it here so let me save this and let me test this out oh and let's put a print statement here okay there we go and let's access it okay perfect so then essentially if we try to access somewhere else it should essentially hang because we're not returning any default response so i'll kill that then let's come back here so if our request uri path matches people we're gonna write out our response And then what we'll write out is the data from our people collection. And of course, I need to mark this as async. And I can move this over here. And uh, because this returns the future, we can just await that here. So let's save and let's run this again. So if I come here, I get hello world. Any random path returns nothing. If I access people, that should give us the data from our database. Okay, so right now accessing the people endpoint, regardless of the request method, would return the full list um, of persons or people from our database. So let's add a bit more conditions to check the method of the request to tailor the response a bit. What I'll do is I'll refactor this using a switch statement and I'll switch based on the path and if the path is the root then we want to just do that spawns.write hello world and we want to close the request as well because we'll have to be useful to await it using cascades we can chain both of these methods so we can write and close at the same time and then I'll add a break here and then the second case we want to check is for people. And then we'll do this. Then we'll chain it again. 
do a break here as well. And then the default case is a 404 response. And then we will write out to the response, not found, and then we'll close it. Let me get rid of this and save this file. And let's test this out. So if I go to the people endpoint, we get this list of results. If I go to a URL path that doesn't exist, we get not found. And the root will give us hello world. Okay, perfect. If this green is troubling you, you can essentially just do this instead. Yeah, for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just leave it as such, but you can rewrite this in this format if you wish. Now let's handle our our people endpoint accurately. So I'll add some um, to-do comments so we know what we need to do. All right, so this is the to-do blocks that we have for the people endpoint. So let's start with the get request. So if to check the method, we'll do request.method and then equal to get, then we'll just do this over here. Then we save that. And then we will use an else if to check for post. If the request method is post, then we'll handle it here. And then we can do the same for put, delete and patch. All right, so let's come back to post now. We need to extract the information in our payload, in the payload of the post request. And the way we can do that is essentially using a, a transformer called UTF-8 decoder. This transformer is in the dark convert library, which contains a variety of converters, um, including JSON based encoding and decoding and so on and forth. I'll create a content variable and then what we do here is transform our request and then it takes in a stream transformer whereby we have a UTF-8 decoder okay and uh, we want to await this one so we'll await it and for now I'll just print out content to the console and I need to close I need to close the response so what I'll do is I'll simplify this one remove this close and then at the end of all this if I will await request response close so let's test this one out so I'm gonna cancel this run this again and now we'll perform our curl request our localhost endpoint people and then uh, we'll set our header and then we'll send some JSON data so let's test this out right I believe I need to invoke the join method so let's try that again okay server running okay there we go and then of course I can um, decode that JSON I'll call it data and we can do data and we'll retrieve the name. Let's test it again. Okay. All right, there we go. Although what we want to be doing is um, saving this into our database. So the way we'll do that is once after we've decoded it, we will await and call the save method on our collection then pass in our data source and save that. So let's test this out. Let's use our Postman client. We'll perform a post request. Our body is raw headers, set the correct content type. Then let's set the body of our post request. All right, so now let's send it. Okay, we get a 200 okay. And then looking at our database collection, we can find that our item is here. The next request method we're going to look at is our put. And the way we'll do this is we'll have 
our put request will be to this URL, and then we'll pass in an ID, which would target the record in the database that has an ID matching this value. What we'll do with put request is we'll replace whatever record is in the database with this one, which is the nature of um, how put requests are supposed to work. Start by defining a variable called ID. And in this ID, the value will be our request, the URI, and our query parameters. And we want the ID key. And also what we want to do is convert that to, a, to an integer by doing int pass. Okay, so once that we've got our ID, we essentially need to query the item that we're going to be placing. Then we'll do await call.find1. And we want to match where, using the equal selector, we want to match where the ID is equal to the ID from the query string. And once that's given to us, we essentially want to update our database. So it will be the item to replace. And then will be the document we're replacing it with. So essentially we'll retrieve the document in this fashion. So that way, and um, yeah, let me rename it to document and let's try it. So I'll make sure I'm doing a put request to this same entry and then I'll get rid of IP address and let's send it. Okay, that gives us a 200 okay response. And then if we go to our database, scroll through our records, we can find that the IP address is now missing because it replaces the whole document. And let's look at how we can handle our delete request. And let me bring that back. So let's start by grabbing the ID. We can now await, call and do a remove. And then what we'll do here is we'll pass it a selector, which is essentially similar to this one here. And then I'll call it item to delete and I'll pass it in here. Let's test this out. So yes, I'll delete request. And if I send this, you should get a 200 OK. And then if I come to our database where the ID is 101, we get zero record. So it's deleted now. One more thing, actually, before we move to patch. So for requests where the method is set to put, I believe according to the spec, if the item we're looking to replace doesn't exist, um, essentially we need to create that item. So that looks something along the lines of um, this. So if the item to replace, you can check if it actually exists. So if there is no matching item, it will give us null. And then in that case, we can do a column save and then we'll pass in the document. Else we can do this one instead. Okay, so let's test this one. So I'll restart the server. And because we've deleted this already, if I do a put, 101 and I send it should now have created the item in the database so if I search where the ID is 101 there we go we got a field here in the database now let's come back to patch and for our patch request also we do something similar we do it based on the ID and then what we just need to do is also use the update method and before we update we need the item that we wish to patch and then it will be item to patch and then secondly what we need to do is to pass in a map with instructions so if you remember our patches will essentially take the document we send as part of our payload and make that change so if I come back here and I copy all of this I just passed the document in here. So let's try this. So we'll send a patch request and then I will add patched here. And now send 200 OK. We get Jermaine patched. It is worth mentioning that this um, code here is a bit messy with the tons of if statements and switch and so on and so forth. So don't worry about that for now. Just try and understand essentially how you can um, handle 
um, requests coming in to a Dart server and how to interface with the MongoDB database from this code sample here. In the next video, we're going to be refactoring this into a solution that looks much cleaner. All right, so this brings me to the end of this video. I hope it's been interesting. I'm going to be posting this on GitHub. The URL is in the description. Do like this video, do subscribe and click the bell notification icon so that you're updated when new content is released. Also, I've got some posts on my website at creativebracket.com. So do check it out. And yeah, thanks for watching.